Tennessee takes the field, the lineage of this great rivalry must be remembered. Through the years with General Bob Nealon, Paul Fair Bryant, Johnny Majors. Through the years with a young quarterback, Joe Namath. Through the fierce defenders like Leroy Jordan and a determined Reggie White. A year ago, Old Smokey and Tennessee kicked the Crimson Tide. And now they're eyeing Alabama for a second straight year. Peyton Manning has convinced his team they're still in the running for number one. But Bama is ready to unfurl a defense that has the tide on a roll. Alabama is unbeaten and chasing a championship dream. It's Alabama against Tennessee on CBS. Well, the gray days of autumn have invaded the volunteer campus. You know, General Nealon and Bear Bryant relish this kind of setting. They are the men who built the foundation for football in the SEC. And even though the torch has been passed, the intensity of this rivalry remains. Along the banks of the Tennessee River, the Crimson Tide has rolled into Knoxville. Seventh-ranked Alabama against sixth-ranked Tennessee. On an overcast, showery afternoon, the Tennessee Volunteers ready to explode. Four and one on the year. The only loss was to Florida five weeks ago, 35 to 29. Coach Philip Fuller and his Volunteers coming out before over 100,000 here in Knoxville. The gateway to the Smoky Mountains. has won in its last five trips to Neyland Stadium. They have not lost here since 1984. Undefeated on the year and ranked seventh in the country. And good afternoon, everybody. I'm Jim Nance. It's great to have you with us. You know, when you talk about a story program like uh, Alabama, it's hard to believe you could actually say that they could go through a season somewhat in anonymity, but that's kind of been the case with Alabama this year. 7-0, ranked seventh, but all seven teams they played unranked at game time. So they're a real mystery. No one knows what to expect, and thus they're a huge underdog today. Terry Donahue is alongside, and uh, Terry, this Alabama team, just, just who are these guys? Well, Alabama reflects their head coach, Gene Stallings, He's a disciple of Bear Bryant, which means good, tough, hard-nosed, old-fashioned football. He wants to play great defense, field position, and have a running game that eats up the clock. You're not going to see a lot of high-tech offense with this guy. Well, when you talk about running the football, we're talking about one man, Dennis Riddle, and he's been really grinding it out the last couple of weeks. Dennis Riddle likes to carry the ball often, but the Alabama coaches have two numbers in their minds, 227. 200 yards rushing and Dennis Riddle will be a big part of that equation 27 points is what they feel they need to have to win the game if they hit those two numbers 227 look for Alabama to win the game well Peyton Manning when we were here for the Florida game five weeks ago he started to turn it around at halftime in the last 10 quarters he has been sensational how about Peyton Manning well Peyton Manning Manning started slow but he really responded in the second half of the Florida game and it's not only his numbers it's the great leadership that he has provided Tennessee in the locker room enabling them to bounce back after that Florida game if he continues on a roll today it'll be roll balls not roll tide all right well Michelle Tafoya's roll as always, patrolling the sidelines. We're glad to have her with us. Let's bring her in right now. Michelle, take it away. All right, Jim. Well, moments ago, Phil Former told his Tennessee volunteers our pride, our manhood, and our dignity have been challenged. This game is a little bit bigger than most. Well, the magnitude of this rivalry is unmistakable. Take, for instance, the menu changes in Tuscaloosa this week for the Alabama Crimson Tide. Their mashed potatoes were dyed orange, and instead of cola, orange soda was served. And for dessert, orange marmalade pie and cake covered with orange frosting. Now, Alabama linebacker Dwayne Rudd told me he didn't mind the food so much. It was just the incessant playing of Rocky Top at practice and in the locker room that got on his nerves. And that's exactly what Gene Stallings wanted. He wanted an aggravated defense ready to take out its frustrations on the big orange. Jim? 
Well, those uh, orange mashed potatoes can really make a difference. You ever had any of those, Coach? I'll tell you, there probably is not a lot of guys that enjoyed that training table meal. <laughs> orange mashed potatoes, my goodness. Uh, last year, Tennessee broke a nine-year winless streak against the Tide, winning down at Legion Field 41-14. to And Tennessee has won the toss, elected to receive, and William Watts boots it. Terry Fair, the nation's leading punt returner, running it back. Out to the 23-yard line. So Alabama 7-0 and Tennessee 4-1. Quarterback by Peyton Manning. Currently ranked seventh in the country in passing. Last year against Alabama, he threw for over 300 yards, becoming the first quarterback in a regular season game to throw for over 300 against a Gene Stallings coached Alabama squad. In fact, there hasn't been another 300-yard passer since. He knocks off those kind of performances by the week. Andy McCullough in as a third receiver. They actually start with four wides, and Manning going long as they did last year, and it was dropped by Marcus Nash. A year ago, Tennessee struck for an 80-yard touchdown on the game's first play to Joey Kent. This time, Marcus Nash should have had it near the Alabama 40. Well, Peyton Manning is able to beat you with his arm and his head. He checked off on the very first play from scrimmage, hit him right in the hands. Marcus Nash has got to make that play to come up with that ball to beat, ten, uh, to beat Alabama. Soggy conditions, on and off showers expected today. Temperature in the high 60s. Second down and 10, and Manning rolling out, firing on the run. That was intended for Joey Kent, covered by Ralph Staten in the backfield with Manning, Jay Graham. He's starting to get things in gear after a slow start to his year. Ford's the fullback, Kent the most decorated receiver in Tennessee history with Nash and Dustin Moore. On the line, Teague, Robinson, Gibson, Poole, and freshman Chad Clifton on the right side. Kelvin Sigler has come in as an extra defensive back for the Alabama Crimson Tide on third and ten for Tennessee. Blitzing, and they got to Manning just as he released it. And an impact on the pass that was headed in the direction of Andy McCullough. Heavy pressure by Michael Myers. Alabama's defensive coordinator Mike DeBose felt that one of the keys to the game this afternoon was being able to put pressure on Manning with his front people, not always having to blitz. That's exactly what they were able to do in that particular case. So three and out, Larry Binion with a pretty good rush from Alabama. Binion gets it away. Chad Goss runs it back for about four yards. Ball squirted loose at the back end of that, but they're going to rule him down. A 42-yard punt. Special teams have been a little shaky, in fact, for Alabama this year, except for their kickoff return average, which is the best in the entire country. Well, well, there's no question Alabama possibly have could, could have fumbled this ball, right? Oh, he wasn't the down, ball was he? Came out. There's, the ball came out prior to his knee hitting the ground. Alabama's been very fortunate. Nash dropped the opening pass that was a huge play for Tennessee, and then the fumble right there on the punt return. Freddie Kitchens directs the Alabama attack. The junior starts out with two tight ends, Hape and Rutledge, and a little misdirection play, Riddle, near the 40, only about a yard pickup. Dennis Riddle has 10 touchdowns on the season. Sism in the backfield. Michael Vaughn, who caught two scores last week. And West, a couple of speedsters. Hate the tight end. On the line, Samuel's friend, Causey Meadows and Demario. Calvin Hall has come in for Bama. Second down and eight. Out of the eye. It's Riddle again. He was trying to bounce off the first hit of Ron Green. But Green had a grasp of him. It'll be third and long. Tennessee's defense anchored up front by Leonard Little with Duff and Green and Jonathan Brown, who's been making sacks here lately. Wilson, Hines, and 
Jester gets the nod today over Craig King with Austin, Noel, Parker, and Terry Fair in the secondary. The overall speed of the Tennessee defense is one of the things that Alabama has to contend with this afternoon. Kitchens gets away from the pressure. Now fires a wobbly ball downfield. It's intercepted. Terry Fair with the interception this time. And Kitchens took a pretty good lick from Leonard Little. Freddie Kitchens cannot continue to turn the ball over on his offensive team. He's got to be able to make better throwing decisions. Right now, he's a liability for Alabama. Leonard Little right there lays the wood to him. Kitchens is banged up from previous games, but he's got to be able to put that ball out of bounds if a receiver is covered, which in that particular case he is. Kitchens, he's a big kid for quarterback. I'll tell you, he felt that one for a while. He's one for six with two passes intercepted here in the opening quarter. Tennessee from the 24. Graham side snapping a defender and getting out to the 33. About an eight-yard run before Kevin Jackson jolted him in the secondary. He got away for a moment from Andre Short. Tennessee's fifth possession, and we're still in the first quarter. Well, neither team is able to move the ball right now against these defenses and trying to run the ball against Alabama's defense is a task. Peyton Manning will have to heat it up and Tennessee will have to keep Alabama spread to move the ball effectively all day. First down from the 36. Manning looking right side. He's got a man there, Joey Kent, incomplete. Well, Kitchens is one for six. Manning is now one for seven. However, he has not thrown an interception. In fact, hasn't thrown an INT in his last 109 attempts. When you come into a game like Alabama, Tennessee, you expect your big play players to make plays. Joey Kent has to catch that ball for Peyton Manning. You have got to come up big in big games. Well, passing yards <laughs> with a minute 46 to go first quarter. Who would have thought that prior to the wow. game? This one. You won't keep Manning's numbers down low for long. There's Price with the grab at the 43. Townsend on the coverage. It'll still be third and about five. Peerless Price. We saw him catch a 72-yard touchdown against Florida. The Tennessee's first points of that game. But Price comes from Dayton, Ohio, where he was a high school teammate of Andy McCullough, who's been in this game. In fact, was called for that offensive interference penalty earlier. McCullough and Price from Meadowdale High School in Dayton, Ohio. The parents carpool to all the volunteer home games. Third down and four. And sacked on the blitz from Kelvin Sibler. And that's a huge loss all the way back to the 31. Tennessee was coming off a misdirection play, a naked bootleg. Kelvin Sigler just came on the blitz from the left side of the screen. He comes on the blitz. Manning just had no chance but to eat the ball. He made a good play there. He didn't hurt his offensive team. You live to fight another day. 12-yard loss, and Binion punts again. This one will not be touched by Alabama. Goss lets it. Die at the 25. 18 seconds to go in the first quarter. Scoreless. Alabama, Riddle runs it on a two yard gain to close out the first quarter. You get the feeling that the first quarter went just about as Gene Stallings would like it to go. It's a defensive struggle. Both defensive teams are playing well. Neither offense can move. The closer the game is, the better Alabama likes it. Two other guys would have liked that first quarter, too. General Nealon and Bear Bryant. Scoreless after one. We'll return to Nealon Stadium after this message and a word from your local station. Jim Nance with Terry Donahue, Michelle Tafoya from Knoxville, Tennessee, getting ready for the second quarter. Alabama quarterback 
Freddie Kitchens, one of six, with two being caught by the other side. Nice piece of running here by Riddle, getting out into the open. Finally brought down by Parker. Well, he hurtled past a couple of defenders, including Al Wilson, to pick up 19. Well, Patrick Happ, the tight end, made a great block that enabled Riddle to run off tackle here. He starts wide, then turns it up the field for the run. Riddle is a guy who rushed for almost 1,000 yards last year before losing his job in spring practice. He's got a fire in his stomach. He wants to make the 1,000-yard barrier this year. But look at the last two games. Over 100 in each of them. Riddle again, breaking tackles. Cutting back to the middle, and Leonard Little chases him down in the 33. Noel and Parker had a shot at him. He broke away from the safeties. And he goes from a 19-yard carry to a 21-yard game. Once again, Patrick Hayden makes a key block. When you're playing against a back like Dennis Riddle, you cannot arm tackle him. You've got to get him wrapped up and bring him down. He's a strong, powerful back, and he'll get stronger as the game goes on. First trip into Tennessee territory, staying on the ground, and Riddle advances it to the 30. Billy Ratliff and Al Wilson combine on the hit. Leonard Little sitting out of play after making that uh, tackle a moment ago. Leonard Little did not play well last week against Georgia. Yesterday in visiting with him, he had made a real commitment to stepping his game up a whole new notch today against Alabama. Riddle with 60 yards rushing on the game sits out this play. Alexander in for him. Sean Alexander, blocker in front, cuts it back inside. Oh, that's a firm tackle by Ratliff. Freshman from Magnolia, Mississippi, who they say is going to be a big time player around here. He drove him back. It'll be third down for Bama and about three to go. Riddle returns. Alabama is attacking with two tight ends, one on the line and one in a wing position, and the wing position is disrupting the Tennessee defense. Third and three. Hurdling is Riddle, and he is driven back short of the first. About a yard shy of the first down. Noel. Tory Noel. I, I would suspect that Gene Stallings will go for this. They've had some trouble with their place kicking. The ball will be wet because of the rain. I'll be very surprised if Gene Stallings does not go for this. There's Robinson, the offensive lineman for Tennessee, with the ankle sprain going to the locker room. Stallings is going for it. Little back on the defensive line for Tennessee. Fourth and one. Let's call it two. Chance. Leonard Little got in there quickly. And Bama denied on fourth and two. Leonard Little said he was going to step his game up. He will come from the top of the screen and stuff the fullback, which it creates no running room, no lane for the tailback to get through. And Phil Fulmer has got to love defense when it goes like that for him. Riddle with some good running on that series, but not on fourth down, never given a chance at all. Tennessee football. Well, for Bama, it would have been a 42-yard field goal try. Instead, went for it on fourth and two. Denied by Tennessee, and the Volunteers take over from their own 20. In on Manning, football free. Hood has it. Inside of the five. Move him down to the three. Ralph Staten hammered Manning as they continue to unload on the quarterback, and Bama is set up at the three-yard line. Peyton Manning never saw it coming. He had his back turned to the blitz. He never had an opportunity to protect himself. He came off a play-action fake. Ralph Staten, 41, comes, knocks the ball loose, 
and Chris Hood, 34, the great defensive end for Alabama, needed to pick it up and score with it right there. Now they've got to punch it in there. He needs to score. Look at him. Slipped a little bit on the he wet did. surface. He did. I'm going to give you that. He did. That was a lineman's dream right oh, there. Oh, he had it, though, didn't he? Oh. He had it. This is Riddle territory. First and goal. Here he is. Banked up by Brown. Jonathan Brown. Junior, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Really been coming on strong the last four games. He's made his presence felt, particularly in pass rush situations. The call surprised me a little bit in the fact that Alabama came into the game feeling that they needed to pound the ball inside the tackles, not run wide with the ball. That was an attempt to run wide against Tennessee's speed. It's not a high percentage throw. Second and goal at the five. Short side of the field, Riddle, no gain. Tennessee's got eight men up on the line of scrimmage and, and, and another player in a position to tackle. When you have this kind of a front, it's just heavy going for your offensive linemen and backs to make any yards. It's just a hard situation to be in. Actually drove him back a yard. It's third and goal at the six. Will this be a goal line stand for Tennessee? If they're able to hold him out? Showing signs of it, that's for sure. Kitchens to the end zone oh, and almost intercepted again by Austin. Oh. That could have been race. A race the other way, 100 yards. Raymond Austin. Raymond Austin would have taken that ball 100 yards the other way if he hadn't dropped it. Marcel West pushes off. Austin has it. But the big problem is Freddie Kitchens just cannot let that ball go into that kind of a coverage. He's just not open enough to release the ball. From the left hash mark, it'll be a field goal try from Brian Cunningham. They alternate kickers. 23-yard try, and it's blocked. Tennessee got a hand on it. Has been the trouble this year with Cunningham. Low trajectory. He's had a point after block. And this is his second field goal of the season. Block only a 23-yard try. Alabama had it first and goal with the three. And comes away empty. It was a high snap by 88. Chester Lewis, the long snapper. The ball was a little bit high. They had difficulty getting it, getting the ball down. And Leonard Little got his hand up and got the ball tipped. Watch the, the snap from Chester Lewis. It's a little high. Consequently, the ball's not put down. And Cunningham this year has had trouble kick, kick, kicking the ball too low. Little got a hand on it. Absolutely. It's interesting, though, how Stalling has really wrestled with that decision. Who to use as the place kicker, John Brock or Brian Cunningham? We kind of sensed it would be Brock today. Cunningham with the low kicks. Gene's been very unhappy with his place kicking. He just hasn't been able to get into a good rhythm. Let us see from the 20. And that's Graham for about four. You know, you give up the ball where Tennessee did as a coach. You're sure that you're going to have some points put on that board. All of a sudden, your defense makes a stand like that. Philip Fulmer, he's got to be jumping for joy. Come out of there with no points. What a defensive effort by Tennessee. What a defensive battle we have today. Four minutes to go before halftime. No score. And look at that play right there. Alabama backing up Graham, maybe give him a yard. Buckner and Myers along with Jackson on the hit. This is a Alabama defense that uh, allows only about 10 first downs a game and ranked nationally in four different categories in the top 10. And you know you're really good when you rank in rush and pass in the top 10 nationally. Then you know you got a good defense. Yeah, those stats so often skewed in one direction because they are porous at another spot. They give up a lot of yards rushing but their passing stats might be low these guys are good everywhere exactly third down third and five 
Manning throws, kick, batted down. Good defensive play by Fernando Bryant. Three and out for Tennessee. Manning now four for 12 for 28 yards. 0 oh for 7 today on third down. Chad Goss will return the punt of Binion. This is another area where Alabama is having trouble in their kicking game and punt returning. You've got to be a good punt catcher before you become a good punt returner. Goss got away with a fumble on the first return of the game. This time out to the 46. So a good starting position. Nothing like the last time, though. <laughs> where they failed to score from the three, but near midfield, Alabama with 3.13 to go. Play action, Kitchens, man open, makes the catch for about nine yards. You know, coaches love to talk about turnovers. Turnovers are gonna kill us. We've gotta make sure we don't turn it over. Alabama has thrown two interceptions in this half, but it hasn't hurt their football team. That's encouraging to the Alabama squad. They've turned the ball over, but they haven't been penalized because of it. Michael Vaughn with that last catch. Less than a yard to go for a first down. First time they passed today on first down, that completion. There's an easy first. Riddle into the secondary. Riddle running inside the 20. And down at the 17, Terry Fair was the last man who could get him? The, the Alabama offensive line is intact from a year ago. All five starters are back. They're a physical offensive line. And right there is an example of why you want to get the ball to Dennis Riddle. You just let him keep hammering you, and sooner or later, the guy will break the line of scrimmage. 28 yards for Riddle. Montoya Madden has come in at running back. Number 21 getting the carry. And he's inside the 15. And we're inside two minutes. Montoya Madden, the sophomore from Town Creek, Alabama, had his first career touchdown in the game last year against the Volunteers. A game Tennessee won handily, 41-14. But he's been uh, seeing uh, more action by the week. Last week, nine plays, and he carried it all nine times. And interesting enough, Gene Stallings likes to get him inside the 20-yard line because he's such a power runner. He's so short to the ground, he's hard to tackle. Second and six. He got tackled that time. Boy, did he quickly. Good hit by Al Wilson. And the clock running with 1.15. Don't you just know that Gene Stallings is loving this kind of a game? I and mean, this is what he talked to us about. He loves a defensive battle. He loves it when you're playing field position. This is how he grew up under Bear Bryant. This is how the Alabama philosophy is. Well, this year, but third and five, deep in Tennessee territory. Kitchens, no chance. Tyrone Hines sacks him at the 20. Alabama came into the game feeling that Tyrone Hines, number 47, was the best defender that they had to play against. Tennessee comes with the blitz against Kitchen. He just didn't have time to unload the ball. Again, because of his inexperience, he will learn eventually to just get this ball and throw it away if at all possible. Brian Cunningham will stay in as the field goal kicker. 36-yard try this time. Straight away and good. First points of the game. Tennessee had 75 total yards. Wow. <laughs> Never in my wildest dreams. Let's go down to Michelle. All right, guys, with Phil Fulmer, and it's been a defensive battle. What has Alabama's defense done so well, and how do you adjust? Well, they're an exceptional defensive football team, and obviously we need to adjust. They're giving us a lot of looks. We've got to get it figured out, give Peyton time, keep our running game going a little bit, and there's a chance for a big play somewhere out there with that much man covered. All right, Coach, thanks a lot. Thank you. There has not been a big play offensively so far for the Volunteers. Alabama leads 3-0 at halftime. Pat O'Brien and Craig James coming along next. 
with college football today after this word from your local station. Alabama will have the football to start the third quarter. Jim Nance, Terry Donahue, Michelle Tafoya from Neyland Stadium. Rain continues to fall here. Holds kick. Bounces out of bounds. Alabama will bring the football out to the 35-yard line. And uh, Terry, how about that first half? We had uh, three turnovers, three points total. What do you expect in the second half? Well, you know, the turnovers didn't hurt, hurt either team. Uh, no one took points off the turnovers. It's a defensive battle. I think that Gene Stallings is loving it right now. It's more his game. This half, as Phil Fulmer said, there are some big plays out there. Tennessee has to go out and get those big plays. So with the ball being kicked out of bounds, Alabama will start from the 35. Riddle right up the middle for five. He had 88 yards rushing in the first half, now up to 93, on his way to his third straight 100-yard game. You know, in that first half, uh, third down conversions, a little telling also. Neither team could generate much offense because of the third down inefficiency of the throwing game. Alabama is on their way to 200 yards rushing as they wanted to. Alvin Hall and his receiver, second and five. Riddle decides to go to the left. Picks up the first down. Looks like an old Saran Stacy move for Alabama. To gain nine, he's over 100 with that carry. A lot of people think that Dennis Riddle's greatest asset is his vision. This is just like playing out in the sandlot. He sees the defense over pursuit. He just changes his direction and takes it back by himself. That's an athlete making a play, helping his team get off the hook. This is the way I expected Alabama to come out in the first half of the game, running the ball with Riddle off tackle, trying to pound Tennessee. They came out with Kitchen throwing. 154 he had against North Carolina State, 140 against Ole Miss, now 102 and looking for more against Tennessee. He's going to find more. Riddle, you started to see him now finding that groove in the second quarter. He's all the way down to the 39 of the Volunteers. Noel and Parker, the safeties, made the hit. Patrick Hape, the big tight end who's playing wingback, is making the offensive game plan work. You can watch him at the top of the screen. He is the guy who can double down from that position. It creates a soft spot in the Tennessee defense and allows Dennis Riddle to attack that soft spot. Dennis Riddle, who grew up in Tuscaloosa, Played at Central High School in the shadows of Bryant-Denny Stadium. Starring today for the Tide. Here he is again, driving the pile for about three when there was very little room to operate. When, when you go in at halftime and you're Alabama and you look at that first half, you sit down as a coaching staff and you say, hey, we love our quarterback, Freddie Kitchens. He can win at Alabama. He can help us. But don't put him in a position to hurt our team. In the first half, when you're throwing the ball all over the lot with a guy like Freddie Kitchens, he can hurt you. He threw two interceptions. Sooner or later, you have to throw with your quarterback. But if you don't have an experienced guy, your team should carry your quarterback if your quarterback cannot carry the team. Sean Alexander in the backfield now. Riddle out on this play. Second and eight. Little giving chase. And he catches up with Kitchens, who gained about two yards. Saw the speed there of the defensive end from Asheville, North Carolina. Leonard Little is one of the fastest defensive linemen in the history of Tennessee. He can run like the wind, and this is what makes big plays on defense, that team speed. Everybody in the country that's in the top five or ten teams, they have team speed. That guy personifies what it's all about. Having a nice game today. Blocked the field goal. We were told he's very motivated after last week's play against Georgia was below his high standard. Third down and six. Riddle returns. Now they run the option. Kitchen keeps. Flag thrown. Say his second effort got him close to the chain, but maybe uh, a half yard shy. He's a big physical quarterback. When he turns up the line of scrimmage, you're talking about 235 pounds. Big penalty here against Bama. Take him out of field goal range. Huge. 
Alabama in the SEC Western Division, the only unbeaten team, trying to make it into that uh, SEC championship game. In all likelihood, the Florida will be waiting for that SEC title contest. LSU beat Mississippi State today in a driving rain at Baton Rouge. Gene Stallings' team won the national championship back in 1992. In fact, the only SEC title in SEC team to win the national championship in the last 16 years was Alabama 92. Also had a 28-game winning streak during Gene's early years at Alabama. Third, People forget that. Third and 11, Kitchens. Man open, West at the 10, touchdown, Alabama! has not hit a lot of receivers today, but he's never thrown a bigger pass in his life than that one to Marcel West. Marcel West just gets behind the Tennessee defense. He got lost back there, a 40-yard strike, and the extra point makes it 10-0. Cunningham converts. 40-yard connection, Kitchens to Marcel West. In the rain, well, the ball wobbled a bit, but West was there. He took the last 10 yards in for the score. A 65-yard drive on the first possession of the second half. Seven plays, Kitchens pass for the West to West for the score, 10-0, Bama. William Watts kicking. And a good one. It cannot be returned. What happened on that play, Terry? Somebody in the Tennessee secondary, either Jason Parker, the safety, or Terry Fair, the corner, somebody breaks the coverage. It's either man-to-man -man or too deep. I can't really tell to be sure, but you can, you can see right there, West wide open. And that is what allows, along with the scrambling ability of Freddie Kitchens, allows the touchdown to occur. Defense, 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 defense. Three receiver formation for the Volunteers. First snap for them in the second half. Manning to Nash. And he is hammered after a three-yard completion. Let's check in with Michelle Tafoya. Well, Jim, coming out of the Alabama locker room, two defensive linemen from the Crimson Tide line that's been controlling this game spoke up. Right end Kelvin Moore said, two more 15s and we go home. And defensive tackle Michael Myers added, this is our hometown and we're playing for the national championship. Guys? They've been the forgotten team, Michelle, really, for the national championship race. 7-0 on the year. Again, they did not play a team that was ranked coming into the game until Tennessee today. Second and seven. Ball in the air. Look out and pick off. Deshay Townsend. Out of bounds at the 15. had not thrown an interception in his last 116 attempts until that one. Alabama came with the blitz. It's uncharacteristic of Mike DeBose to blitz a lot, the defensive coordinator. He brought the blitz here. Manning is trying to get the ball to Joy Kent. It hits him in the face mask off his helmet, goes up in the air, and Deshea Townsend comes down with the key interception, gives Alabama great field position. Let's call it 13-yard line. Inside give to Hate, and he's lucky to have it back. Hand off to the tight end, Patrick Hape, who was lined up on a wing in Alabama. You don't expect a lot of razzle-dazzle out of Alabama. This is an inside handoff to the tight end, Hape, who comes inside to get the ball. It's an unexpected counter-type play, but the ball isn't exchanged smoothly between Kitchens and Hape. 
They're lucky to get away without a turnover. Second and 12. Riddle's turn to lose a yard. Terry Fair came up. He's the second turnover for Tennessee. You know, in the first half, the, the three turnovers and all didn't even add up to any points. No harm. No harm whatsoever. The field position off of this turnover is, is critical, but in the first half, there was some key field positions on turnover. Neither team could capitalize. Well, especially the three-yard line starting position after Hood recovered but slipped on his way into the end zone. Tremendous series by Tennessee defense on that particular play that you're referring to. And Alabama came up empty that time, but now in third and 13, leading 10-0. Kitchens, here comes the blitz to Tennessee. He'll tuck it under. And Kitchen short of the first at about the eight-yard line. Well, that was a big play right there by Freddie Kitchens. The blitz came. The quarterback did not sight adjust to the blitz. He didn't see it. But what he did do, he used his athleticism to go ahead and get away from the blitzer who's coming at the top of the screen. He avoids the sack there. He's a big, strong, powerful quarterback at 240 pounds. You know, you kind of don't want to tackle that guy. It's like hitting a fullback. Cunningham back out, his third attempt of the day. 25-yard try, Lance Tucker to hold. Cunningham drills it. 13-0 Alabama. 9-16 to go, third quarter, tied on a roll. Alabama with 10 points in a two-minute stretch. Now lead 13-0, third quarter. Again, angling the boot. Levine will not even think about it. So, Tennessee to start from the 20. Manning across the middle. Kent at the 47, a gain of eight. Boy, you've got to be impressed with the way all three of the academies are playing. They're having a fabulous college football game. And Army is unbeaten. Oh. One of eight unbeaten teams in the country Air that includes Alabama on that list. And Air Force just beat Notre Dame. Sam Pinner is the center in for Brent Gibson. Second down, quickly Kent in the open field. Look out, Joey Kent for the touchdown, Tennessee. This is the way that Tennessee wanted to play from the very start of the game. They wanted to play fast offense. This is what they were referring to. Quick hitting strikes like this one to Joey Kent. The ball is caught in his hands. You're not going to catch that guy from behind once he breaks the line of scrimmage. Fifty-four yards for Tennessee's first points, and Hall's extra point, he missed it. That's a huge miss. It's a seven-point game now. 13-6, third quarter. Dave Manning became Tennessee's second all-time passer. With that 54-yard hookup, he moved past Jeff Francis, trailing only Andy Kelly on the all-time list. Kent, in fact, goes over 100 yards for the seventh straight game. But the extra point means a touchdown, and the PAT would not beat Alabama, but would take them into overtime. Flags flying west out to the 22, and Alabama could be uh, looking at a starting field position at about the 10. Riddle. Out to the 27. Stallings would love one of those long drives right now. Burn off some of the clock, move it well into the fourth quarter. With that seven-point lead. I promise you, Peyton Manning right now is telling the David Cutcliffe up in the press box, I didn't get the ball. It was a little short. He pulled out just a little bit, and there we've got the center talking it over with him. Sam Sam Pinner as well. Yeah. 
second and four. Riddle, that's the first down for Alabama. Well, it's Bear Bryant football. You said it from the start here at Alabama. Gene Stallings, he said no sense talking about it when asked about being in this national championship race, but overlooked by many. He said, we beat the teams on our schedule. We're going to play for it. And that's really true. They were able to go on through unbeaten, then play Florida. And that would be on the schedule. And, and he said he didn't talk a lot about the national championship. He talked about each week. Take one game at a time, and if you win the ones you're supposed to, you're going to play for the national championship. Riddle. Look at him keep his balance. He's near 150 yards rushing and knocked out of bounds at the 49. Patrick Haight with some kind of block. The wing formation has really helped Alabama today. Patrick Haight lines up at the wing along with Rutledge as a tight end, and it creates a soft spot on the corner against the Tennessee defense. And that is what's allowing Dennis Riddle to find the running room in that defense. 11 seconds to go, third quarter. Montoya Madden comes in for Riddle, who gets a rest. Dennis Riddle has had 28 carries for 150 yards. Remember, they wanted 200 yards rushing. Madden goes low to advance the football into Tennessee territory. They won't have to travel far to switch ends. We've got one quarter to go. The seventh-ranked team in the country leads the number six team in the country by seven. We'll be back after this word from your local station. We're back to start the fourth quarter. Dennis Riddle watching from the sidelines right now as Montoya Madden is in the backfield. Jim Nance, Terry Donahue, Michelle Tafoya. Bama leading by seven. Madden on second down and seven. No gain. Billy Barron got there first. That was that built up too. That was a big defensive stop right there for Tennessee because they put Alabama in a position that Alabama does not perform well in third and long yardage. So when you can stop Alabama on, on second down, they have a problem. The advantage is with Tennessee. As the rain intensifies, so does the drama. Third down and nine. Riddle returns. Kitchen wanting to throw. Awkward pass in the area of Vaughn and a flag thrown. They're going to get the interference call against Terry Fair. Terry Fair is covering man to man against Michael Vaughn, and you cannot hold on. You can't push off with either man, either offensively or defensively. Terry Fair pushing that off, pushing off right there is called for the penalty. Defensive pass interference, the 15 yards, on the first down. Florida State leading Virginia 21-17 as they start the fourth quarter. Wow, what a ball game going on there. Kitchen's pass was very strange looking. We know it's slippery out there, but uh, well, you can see why. Tyrone right Hines. on the wrist. Tyrone Hines really knocked his wrist right there. Kitchens is a guy that's banged up. He's got bad ribs. He's got bad wrists. This guy, is, but he's a warrior. The players love him. They love to be around him because he has a, the mindset of a football player. Guys rally to that. From the 35 of Tennessee. Riddle outside with room. Oh, what a hit. What a tackle by Parker. He got his 39th career start today. Jason Parker had a miss the tackle. Riddle may have been at least to the 20 or beyond. No question about it. Jason Parker saves a touchdown run because there is outside air in the defense and Jason Parker comes up to make an open field tackle against a good back is one of the most difficult things any defensive back has to execute. Ball and Buchanan in his receivers, second and six. Holding on to that football with two hands when he got into traffic is Riddle. 
fans love to see explosions on offense. They love to have high-scoring games, but a coach, coaches love this kind of game. This is football. This is, this is what you love, your defensive team slugging it out with your offense. The trenches are so important. The offensive and defensive lines, it's raining. Guys have mud on them, themselves. And this is what football is all about as far as I'm concerned. Travis Smith, number 48, lined up as a fullback out of the eye. He caught a pass in the first half, third and three. And Riddle, I think he has it. Billy Ratliff on the tackle. First down, Alabama. You said look for Riddle to carry the football about 30 times today. Well, 31 already for 161. <laughs> and it isn't over yet. And one of your numbers today was 200, 200 yards rushing. Alabama hits the 200-yard mark in the running game. They've got a great chance to win the game. They're at 169 right now. Riddle will lose a little bit on that one. Ratliff backing him up, too. Alabama's accustomed to controlling the football in the fourth quarter this season. Again, 7-0 on the year. You, you never know how this game is going to turn out, but this is exactly the situation that Gene Stallings and his staff envisioned for themselves prior to the game. As far as they're concerned, the cards are being dealt their way right now. And old Smokey, I'm not sure if he's falling asleep he or can't exactly even, what's going on. I can't even watch. <laughs> he's so nervous about this. Second down and 12. Patton doubled up by King and Ron Green. Ron Green is one of the players who have, have come up big recently for the Tennessee defense. He slants to the inside and quick enough to get back outside to make that positive play for that defense. Again, they put Alabama now in third and 12. This is not where Alabama wants to be in down and distance. Well, if they go to the air and fail to complete it, they would have a 43-yard field goal try. Play action. Kitchens zips it. Look out! Look out! It's fair. Kitchens has an angle on him. Terry Fair in for the touchdown. Now they've got a flag down back at the 28. Tennessee sideline. Oh, one of the last blockers down there called for clipping. Wow. To nullify the touchdown. Terry Fair, who had been a little damaged with the ankle in this half, had set out some. The coaches all week long talked about turnovers. Marcel West runs down, turns around. Terry Fair just makes a great break on the ball, and he's one of the fastest players on the Tennessee team. Right there, Kitchens gives a good effort, but there is a clip. You saw it. Couldn't quite get the number, but definitely a, a clip. Football at the 43. Looked Bill, like Ratliff. Billy Ratliff, number 40, definitely a block in the back. Good call by the official. Instead of a 90-yard run back that could have tied it with the point after, Tennessee from the 43. Manning looks left, throws, short gain to Nash. That was Fair's second interception of the day, and we had just been talking during the commercial about how uh, Terry Fair did not look 100% of this half with his ankle. Well, he really didn't. In fact, Copeland went in and received a punt in his place because his ankle's bothering him. But players come up with big plays and big games, and Terry Fair certainly did in that case. But again, remember, it was third and eight. That's not Alabama's forte. Second and five. Brent Gibson has come back at center for Penner. Receiver on the ground, Joey Kent. The wizardry of Joey Kent picks up a first down at the 24. What a play. Yep. 
you want to see why the guy is the best receiver in the history of the University of Tennessee. He falls on the ground, but he recovers enough. The ball hits him right in the hands. Peyton Manning, excellent throw, knowing his receiver was down on the ground. Kent, six catches, 125 yards. What a play that was. Had Townsend not fallen down, he may have had a shot at an interception. Tears on first down over to Nash. Now they're picking up steam. And a late hit. A late hit will move the football near the five. Fernando Bryant belted him out of bounds. Marcus Nash dropped the opening play of the game, but he didn't drop this one. He comes up big when he needs to. Alabama is hits late, out of bounds. It's a definite penalty. Good call by the official. Fernando Bryant has to keep his poise in that particular case. Personal foul, hitting out of bounds. The distance, measures the height of the distance to the goal line. First down. How fast a game can turn around with just a mistake or two, a mental mistake. That's just a mental error right there. First and goal to go, Tennessee from the five. Graham. Give it to him. Touchdown, Tennessee. against Alabama last year with a 75-yard touchdown run. He puts him on the scoreboard here, finally making his presence felt, but he's down. He's down before he gets the ball into the end zone. Bad call by the official. Now the extra point. Missed the last time. Ball to tie it. Dead center. Well, it was first and goal, and it looked like Graham had the knee down early. But it looked also as though there was no stopping Tennessee after that interception. The game is tied with 9.41 remaining. All tied, 9.41 remaining. Alabama was down deep in Tennessee territory on third down. Had they just had an incomplete pass, they could have been attempting a field goal to go up 10. Instead, Terry Fair intercepts. Tennessee scores the touchdown. West runs it back to the 25 and lets go down to the sideline for Michelle Tafoya. All right, Jim. Well, Tennessee's been getting much improved play from its offensive line after a confrontation between Phil Fulmer and Robert Poole, who got chastised for the poor offensive line play. As Fulmer walked away, Poole shouted back at him, but a teammate calmed him down by saying, show him he's wrong. And so far, Poole's been doing that, but this harkens back to earlier in the season when Poole felt he was being unfairly blamed for the poor offensive line play by the coaching staff and the media, Jim. Well, in that series, the offense just went 43 yards in four plays. There's Riddle. Well, that doesn't hurt you. Almost a 20-yard run. Give him 19 and out of bounds at the 39. Michael Vaughn, the receiver, helped clear out that side. And again, Patrick Haight, along with Michael Vaughn, they throw the key blocks. They are the ones that seal the corner for Alabama and allow the back, Dennis Riddle, to get outside. The wing formation, either slotted or on the, off the line, that has been the formation that has hurt the Tennessee defense the most today. And Patrick Happ has been the guy. Hey, Patrick Hay. First down, it's Riddle again. Near the 45, about six. And the rest of the top ten, you'll run into these two as you look at the next five. Alabama 7-0, ranked seventh. The slot behind Tennessee and the AP poll are actually reversed in the coaches' poll. Colorado, North Carolina. Colorado in a fight today with the Longhorns. Second down, four. 4.50 to go, clock running. No gain for Riddle. 
No, but it was a good, smart play. Did you notice there was a few more feet in that run, but instead of taking the ball out of bounds, he kept it inbounds, which keeps the clock moving. I tell you, I know Gene Stallings saw it, and I guarantee he'd hug that guy right now if he could get his hands on him. That was a very good play by Dennis Riddle. Third and three. close. I don't think he has it. It's going to be less than a yard shy. Ron Green got him by the ankles. Dennis Riddle has carried the ball time and time again, come up successfully, but the Tennessee defense responds here. He's about a half yard short of the first down. Alabama is going to punt the ball. Well, they marked it all the way back at the 47. Copeland back to return. 3.20 to go. Clock still running. Stockton. Oh, and you see, you see some of the guys from Tennessee not aware of where the football is, and you hold your breath if you're Philip Fulmer, but it does not touch a volunteer. The ball is down at the 22. Peyton Manning comes onto the field with 3.11 remaining. With this rain and the way the kicking game has been today, you have to think to about the 30 of Alabama to have a shot at a winning field. And you've got the drama of one of the best quarterbacks in the country, Peyton Manning, playing into the teeth of one of the best defenses in the country in Alabama. Graham pops at the 20. In this game, there was just the lone field goal in the first half. That by Brian Cunningham. Third quarter, West wide open, 40-yard strike. Then after an interception, Alabama added three more, 13-0. The quick hit, Manning to Kent, 54 yards, extra point missed. Tennessee tied it on a Graham five-yard run set up by the Terry Fair interception. And that's where it stands right now. 13-13, 2.35 remaining. Second and 12. Hole. Graham breaks the tackle. Jay Graham, touchdown, Tennessee. 79 yards. of frustration turned around on one carry by Jay Graham and Tennessee takes the 20 to 13 lead with 217 remaining you haven't heard us mention a fullback's name for Tennessee all day long but watch the fullback Eric Lane make the block that springs him for the long run and look at the hole after the block and the only guy who can make the play is number 20, Kev Kelvin Ziegler. He misses the play. He's got to make that play as a safety man. A free safety has got to make that play to stop the long touchdown run. He was the one who last year, when Alabama tried to crawl back into the game down a Legion field, and broke open the game with a 75-yard touchdown run also down the right sideline. Unbelievable. What a heck of a run. Twenty unanswered by Tennessee. Vaughn on the return. Vaughn takes a wicked hit by Fred King at the 23. Freddie Kitchens is going to be pushed to the limit in this case against that Tennessee defense in this crowd. Alabama has only one timeout. 
Pitch is almost intercepted by Raymond Austin. Who had a pick in the first half also. The last time, the last time Alabama won here, or Tennessee won here against Alabama, it was back in 1984. Five straight times the Tide has come in here and beaten Tennessee on its home turf. Well, you got to give Tennessee credit down 13 to nothing for their defense and offensive teams to respond like that. They've got some character. Second and 10. Kitchens airing it out long. Ball is there. Oh, he had it for a moment at the 40. Calvin Hall looked like he should have made the catch there, Terry. You can't, you can't blame Freddie Kitchens for this throw. Calvin Hall has a cast on his right hand. One of the reasons he probably could not come up with the ball is because of that cast. Third down, third and 10. Going long again. Vaughn is there. Vaughn makes the catch. Alabama has it near the Tennessee 20. Six yards to Michael Vaughn. Well, what about Freddie Kitchens? He comes back with another perfect throw after having a tough day. And Terry Fair, the guy who made the huge interception a few minutes ago, gets beat on this play. And Michael Vaughn, who set the Mississippi high school record for 40 touchdowns, he comes up with the play. Look at the concentration. Oh, it almost came out, too. He caught more touchdowns, that is, than any player in Mississippi history. And he has the football at the 22. 22 of Tennessee, 147. One timeout for Bama. Tate with the run. Here's the 16. That timeout that Alabama burned earlier in the game, it was a good call at the time. It was a thing to do, but that timeout will come back to haunt Alabama. That was the timeout, too, where they came out of it and threw the interception to Fair. It absolutely was, but Kitchens made a good call because he was running out of time. The play came in late from the sideline. Second and four to the line quickly inside 120. Riddle. Met right away by Tyrone Hines. And Kitchens wants to take their final timeout. They'll have third and now third and four, I believe. You should be there. Meanwhile, not, no easy street here for Tennessee's defense. Trying to shut down Alabama with 108 to go. Third down and four. Kitchens, is there a flag? Hines looked to be on his back, no call. It'll be fourth down. Hines knocked it away. That was awful close coverage. The Alabama coaches felt that the best defensive player on the field was Tyrone Hines, the middle linebacker for Tennessee. West is in a tight end. He runs an inside route, but it's just a great play by Tyrone Hines. He's got a hold of the back, but he reaches around. The official didn't see him have a hold of that jersey with his left hand. Here we go, fourth and four. Fourth down. Must get to the 12. To have any hope, Riddle still on his feet. Riddle, where will they mark it? First down. They gave him the first down when he should have been stopped near the 20. What an individual effort by Dennis Riddle. The guy has played like a warrior all day long. We, we see Kitchen throw a, a swing pass to the outside. He gets hit behind the line of scrimmage. He does it on individual effort right there. Look Just great this. strength. It's ball game at that point. It is it's going over. to be ball game. Game is over. They spot it at the 11. First down Alabama, 56 seconds. But you're talking about a guy that has been almost a thousand yard rusher. He wants that thousand yards this year. He's competing like every football player wants to compete. No timeouts. First down from the 11. Gets it. Avoids the sack. 
Malthus throws it away. Smart play by Freddie Kitchens right there. He needed to get rid of the ball. He stops the clock. He's got downs enough to win the football game. He, the time is the enemy right now. He's got downs. He just needed to get that clock stopped. Good play by him. Ray Austin locked up man-to-man -man against Vaughn. Got his hand in his face mask right there. Officials are going to let him play here at the end of the game like that. Second down, 10, and even 50 seconds remaining. Kitchens to the end zone and almost intercepted by Fair. Paul looked to bump him for a moment there. Fair already with two interceptions today. Unless you get a real violent interference play you don't want to make a call in this area of the field that's just two players going for the ball somebody shoves off they're both shoving off as far as i'm concerned now third down touchdown and an extra point to send this game into overtime was open and he was overthrown. Billy Ratliff, number 40, put the pressure on Kitchens. Excellent pass rush that time. Hape was wide open. Kitchens just didn't have quite enough time to get the ball to the tight end. He runs a little corner route. He pushes off. He is open. But the pressure from Billy Ratliff, number 40, is what disrupted the play. Well, they've converted once on fourth down on a superhuman effort by Riddle. They have the third down pass play for 56 yards. Is it a day of destiny for the Clemson Tide? Fourth and 10, 39 seconds. Kitchens, ball deflected, stripped away. Tennessee football, volunteers will win. Mario, he's the guy that gets his hand on that ball and takes it out of Freddie Kitchens' arm. And Little shaken up after stripping the ball, hit by his own teammate, Jonathan Brown. Philip Fulmer's team responds, coming back from a 13-0 deficit in the third quarter. They still harbor hopes of somehow working their way back into the championship picture. They need some help. It would not be unrealistic to believe that this team could eventually end up playing Florida again in the Sugar Bowl. A lot of things would have to happen. But Tennessee could win out from this point on and have a chance at getting ultimately what they want so badly, the national championship. Tennessee will be heavily favored in its last five regular season games and in fact has not lost a game in November in the 90s. And that also has something to do with the fact Kentucky and Vanderbilt are always in that equation in November, but they'll be favored the rest of the way. They could go 10 and 1, and if someone like Colorado beats Nebraska, it could be Florida and Tennessee in the Sugar Bowl. Absolutely could happen. What an effort by both teams. Philip Fulmer, Gene Stallings, both had their clubs ready to play. It was a great college football game. This was college football, SEC style through the years. Peyton Manning grew up as a little boy. He had a quote from Jimmy Connors hanging up in his room. 
down in New Orleans and said, I hate to lose more than I like to win. I tell you, as a coach, you could probably relate to that. I think a lot of athletes and coaches can. Sometimes the pain in the feet is much greater than the exhilaration of the victory. Let's, let's go back down there to Michelle. All right. All right, with Phil Fulmer, what a game you said at halftime. You needed big plays to come back and win this. Alabama found the first few big plays, but then Terry Fair and Jay Graham found it for you. There's two great teams going at each other and the best rivalry in the South, one of the best rivalries in the South. I'm proud of our football team, and I think Coach Stallings is probably very proud of his. It's a classic Southeastern Conference battle. I cannot say enough for the heart of our football team. Congratulations, Coach Jim. Congratulations, Philip Fulmer. And the Tennessee will be singing Rocky Top through the night.